Welcome everyone to AGI's GEO webinar series. My name is Heather Holton and I will be moderating today's GEO Connection webinar, Salary Trends and Employment Projections for Geoscience Careers. In today's webinar, we'll be hearing from Leila Gonzalez from AGI's Workforce Program. <clears throat> the presentation will be followed by a panel discussion where the questions from participants will be addressed by our speaker. Again, you can ask questions by typing them into the question or chat box in your webinar panel at any time during the webinar. And with that, I'll turn the slides over to Leela. Great. Thank you, Heather. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at salary and employment trends for U.S. geoscience-related occupations over the past decade. Um, we'll take a look at 2008 to 2018 employment projections as well, so we can see um, where careers are headed in the future for geoscience-related occupations. And also to get a little bit of perspective, we'll also be comparing these trends that we see in these geoscience occupations with salary and employment trends for biology, life scientists, physics, physicists, and chemists. And the reason I chose these three other science occupations is to provide some additional information about geoscience careers, especially for those faculty who are teaching those introductory courses, so they can show students that geoscience is not only a great discipline because of what you get to study, but also because of the competitive salaries and the resilient job growth that we've seen even during these difficult times that we're currently facing. Um, the data we'll be looking at today is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics databases, the National Occupation Employment and Wage Estimates database, as well as the Employment Projections database. So without further ado, let's jump in and start looking at some great data. Okay, our first slide here is going to be looking at salary trends for geoscience-related professions between 1999 and 2010. And really, from this slide, what we can see is a pretty steady and persistent growth in salaries for geoscience-related occupations. Um, one thing to note is that to, since 2006, all salaries for geoscience-related occupations shown here are all higher than the average salary for life, physical, and social science occupations which is here in teal at the bottom. You can see this nice teal line going across here. Um, in 2010, the top salaries for geoscience-related occupations were for national science managers at 129,320, petroleum engineers at 127,970, and engineering managers at almost 126,000. Geoscientists ranked fourth there at 93,380, and mean annual salaries for environmental scientists, which are the lowest of all of these occupations shown here, were at 67,810. And that was just, uh, just over 1,400 greater than the national average for other science occupations. Okay, so what we'll take a look at next is our percent change in mean annual salary between 2009 and 2010. And in order to do this comparison, I did normalize the salaries to $2,000 using the Consumer Price Index. And what we see is that salaries for petroleum engineers and mining and geological engineers had the largest increases over this time period, with 4.6% and 4.3% respectively. The rest of the geoscience-related occupations that we see here varied between a growth of 1.3% to a decrease of 1.3% over that same time period. Now, to put this in perspective, let's take a look at um, life, physical, and social science occupations here in Teal again at a negative 0.9%. And all occupations um, for all U.S. occupations, I should say, only increased by 0.2% between 2009 and 2010. Now, if we look over the period of 2001 to 2010, we see a little bit different picture. Um, salary change for all life, physical, and social science occupations is here at 8.6. And we can see that uh, most of the geoscience-related occupations grew as fast or more, fa or more quickly than these other science occupations with Petroleum engineers taking the top at 27.2% in increase in salary. So, um, natural science managers coming in second at 26.8%. Now moving ahead, let's take a look at, um, coming back to 2010, let's go ahead and take a look at the salary ranges for geoscience-related occupations across different industries. 
what I did here is I aggregated by industry all of the geoscience-related occupations. The boxes are the average salary within that industry, and I'm showing the min and the max salary for that industry for all of the geoscience-related occupations. Um, we can see that salaries range from 137000 in finance and insurance here, all the way down to um, state government at 16, just over 69000 actually 69949000 dollars And you definitely have a different range of um, salaries for each of those industries. Um, it can be as narrow as, such as healthcare here, um, as narrow as 26000 or as wide, um, such as if here in the finance industry, salaries can range up to almost 100000 Now, what we're going to do next is look at the mean annual salaries by industry for each geoscience-related occupation. Now, you don't have to take notes here because I'll be posting all of these on our website. So this slide presentation will be available for download by PDF as soon as we post the um, webinar up on our website, and we'll let you know as soon as that's available. So let's start with engineering managers. Um, engineering, one, one thing to note here um, is that on this slide, for engineering managers as well as natural science managers, whereas we're able to estimate the number of geoscientists working in these occupations, we're not able to estimate the actual salaries that geoscientists make. So what I've done here is just list the salaries for all engineering managers, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so engineering managers make anywhere from just over $88,000 in state government to over $148,000 in oil and gas. And you can see here by this chart that they work in quite a few industries in the U.S. Okay, now let's take a look at natural science managers. Again, state government paying the least at $74,000, and oil and gas paying the most at $172,000. Another thing to note as we go through these slides is to take a look at the variety of um, business sectors where geoscientists work. There are quite a few, um, and that's really good to see. Now let's take a look at petroleum engineers, which, um, again, ranging from salaries ranging from $79,000, in state government all the way up to 179610 in finance and insurance. Um, note here that oil and gas, which for me I expected to pay the most for petroleum engineers, actually ranks second in um, highest salaries for petroleum engineers. Mining and geological engineers, again, um, paid 76000 in non-metallic mineral mining all the way up to over 116000 in oil and gas. Next, we'll take a look at environmental engineers. Um, again, quite a wide array of industries in which they work. Again, from information, 59,570, all the way up to oil and gas, where they make 123,000. We'll move on over to atmospheric and space scientists. Just a few industries that where these, um, these scientists work. From information, just over 81,000, all the way up to management, scientific, and technical consulting at 112,000, almost 113,000 now. Okay, geoscientists, state government paying um, almost 63,000, all the way up into the oil and gas industry again, 132,000. And again, you can see the wide range of sectors that geoscientists work within. Hydrologists, fewer sectors. But again, still pretty lucrative salaries. State government at 66,320, all the way up to federal government at just under 83,000. Um, environmental scientists, um, colleges and universities paying the least there at 56,000, all the way up to the federal government paying the most at over 95,000. And a couple more here. We're going to take a look at geographers. Again, quite a few industries here. Just. Um, six noted here, college and universities at 57, or I'm sorry, 53,780 up to scientific research and development services where they're making around 84,000 a year. And that is it for our quick overview of different salaries. Again, I'll post this on the web so you can download those slides and use them as you need to. Now what I wanted to do is have us take a look at um, 
geoscience-related salaries compared to salaries of physicists, chemists, and biology life scientists. Now what we see here on this graph is we have our black line, which is the aggregated salary for all geoscience-related occupations right here. The green line is the aggregated mean salary for all biology and life science occupations right here. And then what we've done is, um, because these are aggregated, I've shaded the area for all geoscience-related occupations, the maximum to the minimum salary here in gray with the little black dotted lines. And the green dashed lines are the minimum and maximum area for biology life science um, salaries. Chemists here, salaries for chemists are in blue. Salaries for physicists are in purple. Um, we can see that salaries for geoscience-related occupations here have grown as fast, or fast, as fast or faster than salaries for other science occupations. Um, also, one thing to note here in, in 1999, physicist salaries were about $12,000 higher than geoscience aggregate salaries. Um, and in 2010, they were about $18,649 higher over here. Uh, mean annual salaries for chemists have increasingly lagged the salaries for all geoscience-related um, occupations. And another thing to note is how you have this overlap of biology and life science salaries at the lower end of geoscience-related occupation salaries. Um, at the higher end of this range is going to be your biochemist and biophysicist salaries. Um, and then some of the salaries also fall below the lower end of your geoscience-related occupational salaries. Now let's take a look at how things have changed over the last 2009-2010 period. And we can see a large growth in geoscience-related salaries relative to physicists, chemists, um, and even the biology life science salaries. If we look over the last 10-year period from 2001 to 2010, again we do see um, high growth in geoscience-related occupational salaries relative to these other three disciplines. And I put here on top and bottom um, the min and max changes in salary for both geoscience-related occupations as well as that for the biology and life science-related occupations. Okay, so that's been a good look at salaries. Now let's take a look at employment charts. Um, this is a chart that shows employment trends for geoscience-related occupations since 1999 up to 2010. Um, one thing to note here is the increase in environmental science jobs between 2000 and 2006. And also another interesting note here is the increase in petroleum engineering jobs from 2007 up to 2009. We have seen some tapering off in the last couple of years in environmental engineering jobs right here in the green and a little bit of flattening in the geoscience jobs as we've had slower job growth over the recent years. Now if we look at actual percent change in employment over 2009 and 2010, we do see some interesting trends here. Um, geoscience national managers, of course, having 15% growth in that period, down to a 4% growth for atmospheric and space scientists. And if you look at that relative to the other science and engineering occupations, you can see that the geosciences are definitely um, growing in this time period relative to other science disciplines. So it's a, definitely a good career field to be in. Also, if we look at over the last 10 years from 2001 to 2010, definitely see some really good growth, really robust growth in um, geoscience-related occupations relative to other science and engineering occupations. So just wanted to show you that as well. Um, here's, a t here's basically the numbers. Again, if you downloaded some of our recent currents, you'll see these numbers laid out for you. And the whole point of this was to show you um, geoscience-related occupational job growth and employment growth over the last 2009-2010 time period versus the decade relative to biology, physics, and chemists. Now I'll give you a few minutes to kind of look at this slide real quick. Okay. And then moving on, I, again, you can download that from the recent currents. Now, if we look at employment check projections, we've looked at 
how ch employment has changed over the last decade, let's take a look at how it's projected to change in the coming years. These are employment projections, again, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, looking forward at um, 2008 to 2018. The next set of projections for 2010 to 2020 will be released in February of next year. So we'll see how this changes given you know, our current economic recession and um, downturn that we're currently going through. Um, we'll see how this, these projections change. Um, but right now, from BLS's projections, we're looking at about a 50% growth um, in jobs within the professional science and technical services sector for geoscience-related occupations. Overall, we're looking at about a 23% increase between 2008 and 2018, and that means about an additional 60,000 jobs being added in geoscience-related occupations. Um, another thing to note here is that this is just job growth. This has, does not factor in um, retirement for attrition, so as we're facing more and more retirements within the geoscience um, sectors, those projections are not being factored into these charts here. So that's something to keep in mind. If we look at employment rejections, basically for all industry sectors by geoscience-related occupational category, this is where we see the growth happening. Environmental engineers, um, respected jobs in, for environmental engineers are supposed to increase by about 31%, um, all the way down to geoscience engineering managers, which are expected to see a 10% growth. Now keep in mind that all U.S. occupations are only supposed to, are expected to grow by 10 percent between 2008 and 2018. So you can see that these geoscience-related occupations definitely are going to grow faster than um, the U.S. economy as a whole. And just again to put that in perspective with the other three science occupations that we've been looking at, geoscience-related occupations are here in gold. Biologists and life scientists are expected to grow a little bit faster at 27% over this time period. Physicists a bit, a bit slower at 16% and chemists only at 2%. And we'll go ahead and stop here for today. I know that's been a lot of data and again, I will post these slides on the website so that you can download them and take a look through them, digest them a little bit more. Um, I think now that's all I have for today. And I want to thank everyone for listening. Great. Thank you, Leela, um, for that presentation. Now we'll start into the panel discussion. So now is a great time to please type in your questions into the question box, and we will begin answering them. All right. Let's see. We have our first question. Leela, if you are a young geoscientist holding a master's degree and you didn't want to go into the extraction industry, what sector would you recommend looking into when considering salary projections and future demand? Well, you know, Heather, that's a great question, and I think it really depends on um, what the what my degree would be in, um, what you want to do with that degree. Obviously, as you can see in our slides today, there are many industries that geoscience students and graduates can go into. Um, most geoscience careers require a master's degree as an entry level. Um, environmental um, scientist occupations you can get into with a bachelor's degree. So again, it depends on what your degree level is, what your field is in, what your skill set is. Um, another thing to consider is what's your debt load and you know what salary level you'll need to support the lifestyle that you want to pursue. But given that, um, I think you have a lot of options whether you wanted to go into environmental science careers, whether you wanted to work for the federal, state, or local government. Obviously, salaries are very robust. You know, a minimum of what we're seeing in most of the slides today, mid to upper 60s, all the way up to over 100,000. Mm -hmm. um, and those are pretty good salaries across the board. Um, absolutely. So but definitely, I would say, look at more careers. So, All right. Well, that's all the questions we have for today's webinar. Oh. If you have any other questions that were not addressed today, you can email them to us at workforce at agiweb.org. And we'll make sure to send those questions along to Leela, and she'll answer them for you. We will be posting today's recorded webinar on our GeoWebinar site soon. And you can visit the website to view this webinar, as well as some previous ones, and check out the webinar schedule 
for upcoming event, upcoming events. 